Good morning and welcome to Noah's Art Zoo Farm. A hundred acre site with elephants, giraffes, zebras run brightly, four food displays. It's going to be a good day out. So last time I was here, they were doing painted elephant tours, tours, trails, kind of trying to find those painted elephants around the place. This year, we've got an AR trail with this guy. Yes, it's Sean the Sheep. And he's right next to some goats. Every time I see this slide, I'm like, that's pretty cool. It's an elephant. It's like a big tubular slide as well. It's just in front of Elephant Eden. I mean, you might say it's a little bit concerning. I mean, the steps are fine, but just look where you slide down. <laughs> They've called it the Elephant Butt Slide. And from one giant elephant butt slide, we come to an elephant jigsaw model. It's really cool. Look at those little jigsaw pieces. But I think the elephants are actually outside, so we'll go this way. So I believe for the AR trail, you scan these with the app. So this one is just by the elephant enclosure. And there's one of the elephants. I think there's two here. One. And there's another one over there. It's actually really cool when you play with that thing at the top. Last time I came here, the elephants are my favourite. I think they're pretty still high out there. Oh, hello. Bye. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. These are very unusual. I love their hair. I love these birds because their hair is like, where are the cool dudes here? Or dudettes. So they're called the Grey Crowned Crane. <laughs> Signs. Always read them. And here's a vulture. They always look kind of creepy close up. So there's supposed to be a military macaw in here. I feel I can hear it more than I can see it. Oh, what was that? Well, there's some parrots. Oh, I think that is them. They're so brightly coloured. Beaks are huge. I don't know if their colours come out, they are so loud and they're so beautiful and colourful. If they didn't come out, just come on and see them. They're amazing. <laughs> this tortoise is like, I know it's early, but I'm not moving. Oh man, I think the camels are spreading their, their coats. Looks like his coat has seen better days. So this is a nod to the elephant trail they had here last year. Oh, and this is Bristol on that suspension bridge. Is that Ashton Court? Maybe. That's a maze, but I think it's probably the maze they have here. So these are village weavers. And according to the sign, they are the only birds known to be able to tie knots. They're so bright and... You can see them, but they're so yellow. You'd never catch me doing what that Gibbon did. You know, there's so much stent in the rough variety just to spring from branch to branch like that and get around. So elegant. Unlike me. I think there's a few things that every zoo has 
ringtail lemurs. Picture of them, can you? Oh, let's not forget the food. It's here. What, oh, that's your choice? Yeah. You found it? Yeah, I found it. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. And meerkats. I wrote the ones that were place project. They're not really doing proper sentry duty. Although this one is doing some, so proper sentry duty on their own both legs. It's only other keeping an eye out for all the things around them and for upcoming predators. At Wild Place, they kind of just sat down and did it. <laughs> this one's doing it properly. Now this is feed um, two of four for our meerkats today. We've already had a bit of pellet for breakfast, a uh, special meerkat pellet and a little bit of veg. They're getting insects now. They get insects again uh, around about two o'clock-ish. Then about half past four, five o'clock. Today they're getting a meat feed, so they're going to get a bit of mice. Uh, sometimes we, we swap that out for chicks and sometimes they will get a third insect feed. It kind of just varies throughout the week to give them a bit of variety. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a Nile crocodile in there. The glass might be just a little bit too reflective. But it's there. Did you know that a group of meerkats is called a mob? That kind of seems appropriate. It's made me laugh. We're going for a walk through adventure. That little walk is really cool, although you got chased by a bird. <laughs> I've never understood why these are called prairie dogs, because they don't look anything like dogs to me. They look small and cute. I mean, that one there looks like a squirrel. So I've just come up here, which is kind of like a little viewpoint, right at the back of the zoo farm. Place. Um, which is really because it gives an excellent overview of the whole place and kind of you see what's where and that kind of stuff. So right in front of us, that big area there, that hedge area, is according to the park guide, the biggest hedge maze in the UK. I always question that because Longley always claims to have the biggest hedge maze in the UK. Sure, I'm not really sure. I think by distance or length or something. I think this one is technically speaking longer. I can't remember. You can do it in about an hour. I think normally hour to hour and a half. And then right in front of us is the flying field where they'll do, they do kind of bird, birds of prey displays. They're very good. We'll watch one of those and that's about 20 minutes. You've got 
play areas of like rhinos in front of us there's giraffes in that direction um or the elephants enclosure is all that area around the back it's like 20 acres for the elephants which is amazing the meerkats and where the birds of prey are stored away from that direction small there's the entrance down there so you can kind of see just how big this place is but it's really cool because yes it's really big but they haven't just jammed and stuffed it full of animals it's the animals here have got a really nice amount of space to wander around and I think they seem really well cared for. But next thing up, I will be doing the bird display. I think it's about 10, 15 minutes. Good boy, well done. So these posts up here are fairly new, so I'm very glad that um, So he does try to use the hill to his advantage. He knows which way the wind is. Bird, you can find it. Good boy, very nice. Perfect, exactly what we want. Uh, they have a hunter in the world. The biggest thing he's going to take in the wild is probably a large rabbit, uh, but his favourite prey is a brown squirrel called a suslix. Uh, it's about the size of our prairie dogs, but he is far too well fed and far too lazy to even think about going after the prairie dogs, and I think they would win. He's not particularly brave. Um, but yeah, so he's not going to be carrying off wolves and deer, um, but people sadly do still shoot them uh, because of this misconception. They also get poisoned. And the other reason that they are quite often spotted is because they do have a habit of flying over open spaces like fields or at the field. Uh, specifically, they like to eat little rodents, things like mice, voles and shrews. To flush the prey out of the trees, out of the bushes, get it up into the air where it is obvious for the other members to come in and make that killing strike while it's vulnerable. Just like this, very good catch to do. We'll share what they catch, and this is one of the things that has made them so popular with the modern falconer, because they can work really effectively with humans as their sort of hunting pack. They know as long as they um, sort of follow us along, if they do what they are asked to do, then they will. Her hunting and it's the best mental and physical stimulation she can get. It's great exercise and it keeps her brain on the go. And she's like, oh no, didn't catch that jackdaw, I'm gonna go catch you in instead. Uh, so yeah, in this flat line, exactly what she's showing off now, 90 miles an hour would be absolutely maximum for her. It's gonna make me even faster. But again, the main thing is that aerodynamic body. Oh, nice big stoop, perfect. That is exactly how a falcon flies, beautiful Leah. Uh, and it is this sudden stoop, this sudden drop, usually, which will give her the advantage over her prey. Absolutely stunning. You'll see she then almost completely tucks her wings in. Ah, uh, she didn't do it on that one. She, sometimes she will almost completely tuck her wings in, simply use gravity and her streamlined body uh, in, order to, uh, in order to grab her prey. That was a really cool display. There is a second display later at 3 o'clock. I thought they were the same display. They're actually flying different birds, so we'll get there at 3 then. So you may have heard of brown bear, you may have heard of polar bears, have you heard of spectacle bears? That's what we have here. Um, apparently it's the same one type of scent of bear that Paddington bear is, and especially like sweet things. But I couldn't show you because the glass is reflective, and they're all very deservedly staying inside and just keeping cool. <laughs> other balls like they would be in the wild and then they could potentially go off and breed so we can send them to a zoo in the UK or Europe that has African savannah elephants because that's what these boys are so they could go off but they have to be at a certain age the only elephant currently here at the moment that is probably at age to breed is Shaka in front of me here the other two are quite young um, at the moment um, but that is what the plan is so basically these boys are going to be here have that really important part of their life where they socially develop with other bulls um, and then potentially in the future they will move off and we might also get um, new bulls in our facility as well so I lied earlier they actually have three elephants now. they have a new elephant called Sutton that moved in last month who they're integrating with the three at the moment so three in total elephant even Oh, guinea pigs. So in that barn there are horses and cows and there are more cows here. They're actually due for calves at the moment. They were due yesterday, so they're now overdue. And the sheep in here. Lots of bits of reflection without a visit to the gift shop.
shop here is still quite small and it's really cool they've still got the um, elephant sculptures you can buy. It's a shame they have a price of like £120 each. I think they could probably do with making them about the £35-£40 mark to reflect the same price, same price that Grummet and Leash charges because that's quite reasonable for quite a high quality thing. But still cool they're still selling them because it helps support the place and they are pretty nice. Although of course less relevant now because they don't actually have the elephant trail going on anymore. But yeah, they have shown the sheep stuff. So if you want to the sheep stuff, come here. We're going into the maze. I'm not sure this is such a good idea. But question one. What is the baby barn owl called? A signet, a chick, or an owlet? I have no clue. So I'm going to go see. I'm probably wrong. I'm going to say it now. This maze feels a lot more grown than it was last year. I'm not going to answer the questions on my camera. We'll just, I'll show you highlights. I see you before me. Ladies and gentlemen, we have beaten the largest wildlife maze. And this is how the maze looks from the centre. Right down, go down the slide. <laughs> right, that's the maze finished. And just like that, we're back out. And we have missed the start of the bird show, so I might just dawdle much up at the side. I don't think I can ever remember seeing a giant anteater before. It's basically a little bit small, but he was huge. Oh, and now we're dinner. When you come to a zoo, really stay for as long as you can, especially if it's hot, because if you let the weather just cool down a little bit, kind of late in the afternoon, then you find things are more awake. I think it might be like a bit of a human. <laughs> when we're, we tend to be sluggish during hot heat, so when the weather cools down a little bit, we tend to be a bit more active out and not hiding from the sun anymore. So I hope you enjoyed those last few shots of animals around there. I know some of them were repeated from earlier, but hopefully give you an idea of the kind of animals you can see and we're going more, more out and about when it's cooled down just a little bit and with that being said thank you so much for watching it's been really fun today to see the animals again and also to meet people that i saw today i wish i didn't catch the name but thank you so much for saying hi and if you see me in public i'm not the greatest when you see me in public <laughs> so thank you for saying hi if you do come here doing things you do stick around to see the talks because the talks are so worth well and add so much and also like i said go around several times because the animals move around chains like you're more active in the morning or the afternoon so it's worthwhile just sticking around making more of a day of it rather than staying for a couple of hours and with that being said if you like zoos then i can't help recommend you to watch the wild Peace project which i'll leave a link to here i've got many more coming up so do subscribe and i'll see you there